Hello. I'd like to show you how to make a fun little wonky house bunting. And this, I'm sure there's other names for these things, but bunting is the word I'm using today. Just little hanging decorative bits. You can have them straight, you can have them curved, you can do all sorts of things on buntings, but these are little wonky houses and great for using up small leftover pieces, um, in particular some two and a half inch strips, but then all the little applique pieces are just real small leftover pieces of fabric with some fusible web to hold them in place and then we stitch them down. So I'll show you what I've done. I have done a small pattern uh, that shows you how to do all this. This will be on my website on gourmetquarter.com and it's called House Bunting. How unexpected is that? And inside we've got some information how to cut it, um, a little bit of an idea of the houses. The houses themselves, as you can see, are not especially um, regimented or anything. They're all just little shapes, three shapes really, just the house bit, the roof and the door and they just all vary just a little bit so that you get that little folk arty look. So what we're going to do is I've suggested starting off with two and a half inch wide strips because most of us have those these days and you can have a long strip of this for the, for the backing so the back of the bunting has got a fabric on the back and then the front piece, which is the background, and I've, I've used two different blues for my backgrounds. I've got a lighter and a darker one, as you can see on the bunting here as well. And I'm just going to show you on one, because I've already prepared some of these others so that I can show you how to put it together. So in your pattern, you'll see that there's a shape shown here. So I've cut myself a template that I can draw around onto here when I've done the applique so that I can cut it out. So we'll just get started. So what I've done is I've got myself a, st a strip of the back backing fabric and I've cut that, it's two and a half inches wide, but it's, it's four and a half inches long. My batting is the same size and my front piece is the same size. Now, if you can use a fusible batting, that's a great idea. But if you're using just a thin cotton batting, you'll find that it will pretty much sit together without um, too much worry about the fusing anyway especially if you give it a quick press. So we'll bring the iron over because we've got some other ironing to do. And I'll just press those bits, the three layers together, and they'll sit together quite well, as long as I don't handle them too much and then they fall apart, in which case then I iron them again. So I've got my strip ready. Now, with our little shape, we want to have a little bit of green for, to indicate grass. So using up, again, leftovers of... Um, Fusible web, I've got lots of bits and pieces left over, as I'm sure many of us have. This is a great opportunity to use some of those up. So I've just backed um, some some green, which I've cut, a, I've cut a one and a half inch strip. So I've done this, and I've popped a strip of the fusible web on the back, and then I've just sliced it up again to the two and a half inches so that it sits across on a um, background little flag. We'll call them flags because I don't know what else to call them. And I'm going to position that just down to one end and I'm going to iron that in place. So if I was doing several of them at a time, I would get all of these ready to this point because then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and just stitch across there to hold all that. So that's through all three layers and just a straight stitch just on the green but close to the edge. And that anchors everything together, which helps. Keep things steady. So that was that little bit already appliqued on. As easy as that. And then for the house, now in the pattern there is a suggested house shape, but it's a very rough guide for you. You might change the shape of the roof. Sometimes my roofs have little flat roofs, sometimes the houses are tall and skinny. So it's not really um, having exact shapes traced on this. So what I like to do is I have several pieces of fabric already with the fusible web on the back and you can see I've been cutting bits out of this already and so I might decide I want to have a um, what should we have a red house yes we might have a red house and so with my scissors I'll just cut a random shape that might do for a house and it might be in this case fairly tall so nothing terribly exact about that. It's going to sit on 
here so you just want to make sure it's going to fit within your sizing if you need to have a guide here we've got to fit a roof on that so that might be a touch tall but I'll cut myself a roof out of oh, I might have a yellow roof I think and because I know that I don't want too high a roof I might decide that this is just a lower flat roof which again is not an exact shape it's a little bit wonky and again if I'm not 100% sure if that's going to fit I can just test we need to have enough green at the bottom and we need to know that we're coming up here and a little binding so to me that looks pretty good I might just bring that roof down a touch when I iron it on so lots of fun just playing around with this we need to have a little door now so we might have a what should we have for a door we might have a little purple door so again just a little shape a little arched shape because my house is quite tall my door can be reasonably tall so that all looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do now is bring the iron over and iron all those shapes on. So this is intended to be fun, intended to be using up uh, not particularly high in technical detail. I'm going to probably free motion the applique part. You could do it straight stitch. You could do a regular sort of blanket stitch applique. So I'm just going to iron these in place as I go. The fusible web I'm using is a Heat and Bond Featherlight, um, but you could use anything that you happen to have to hand for this. And, uh, having them all slightly different and just a little bit wonky is part of their charm. So I'll just iron those on. So that's ready to go now. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine. Now I like to do mine. Oops, it's popping off. I like to do mine using the free motion um, type of stitching rather than with a foot on. So I'm going to put my free motion sewing foot on here. Hopefully these will go on. They're often a little bit tricky these feet, especially when I'm not watching properly. And I'm going to plug this. This machine has this um, wonderful BSR which is a Benina stitch regulator which allows you to do free motion and have um, relatively even stitching going on. So I'm going to drop my feed teeth now with the button on the side and now I'm just going to free motion close to the edges and so that I don't have to keep stopping and starting I'm going to start somewhere near on the roof but somewhere near that wall on that far side so that when I come back I'm going to go around the roof first when I get back, I'm close to where I want to go, straight down the house without stopping and starting. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going around my roof. And because I'm free motioning, I don't have to keep turning, but if I want to turn, there's nothing to stop me turning that work around so that I'm more comfortable working towards myself. So this stitching can go a little bit wonky. I don't worry too much about it because the whole house is a bit wonky. Now I've gone around the roof. There's thread hanging around here, which is inconvenient to say the least. Now I'm going to keep coming on without taking the needle out and come straight down the wall here. Then I'm going to come across the bottom and I'm going to come right across the door, but stop while I'm still on the door and then stitch around the door and then I'm going to come back across the door and out to the other side of the house and then up the other side. So I've done the whole house, roof and door in one go with the stitching and yes my stitching is just a little bit wobbly today but that's part of the charm of the house I think. So I've got my pieces ready here and I've got my shape. The pattern is showing the shape in here with a line where the grass might go. It's not critical, but it's quite good if there's, there's a similarity about the pieces. So I'm going to lay my shape on top here and I'm just going to use a pencil and I'm going to draw around that so that I've got a good cutting line. And we just 
just about done so that's pretty good now you could use your rotary cutter for some of this if, if that's what you'd like to do I would probably certainly use it for the top edge because we know that that's going to be a straight edge because I've got a line to look at there and or you could lay the template on while you're doing this and certainly coming down the sides to a point it's going to be straight so I would probably do that with my rotary cutter to that point and then I'd get my scissors and you need some nice sharp scissors for this and then I'm just going to cut right on my line around there through all layers together and that should hold quite nicely for you because we're using these nice cotton battings that grip the fabric quite nicely so that's my little shape it looks surprisingly similar to that little shape but I do need to just stitch around close to the edge again there so I'll go back to the machine and do that so this I'm back with my normal regular sewing foot now and I'm just going to sew maybe maybe an eighth maybe not quite an eighth of an inch from that raw edge all the way around so this remains a raw edge on the bunting so just gently go around the corner the curve And that just gives it a nice firm edge and because I'm using these delicious Hoffman Batiks they don't really fray a lot so that works really well for this type of project as well so I've got my all my little shapes ready to go now they've all got their little edging on them so I'm going to show you how to put the little string across the top now so that it holds them together and you can hang it up by the string so in the pattern it suggests that you might want to cut a one and a half inch wide strip of fabric for this. Let's move some of this out of my way. Um, and so what I've done with that, I've already done the pressing on it. It's one and a half inches cut wide, but I've brought the two raw edges into the middle and then I folded that over so that that's going to be the finished width so that like I've got this binding type edging along here. That's how I've done that. So I'm then I'm going to find the middle, pop a pin in there so that I know where the centre is. And then with my little flags here for the bunting, because I've alternated the colours, I'm going to lay them. I've got four of the lighter ones. So I've got an odd number here. So I've got seven little flags. If there's a particular order you want to put them in, now would be the time to decide that. Um, I'm not too worried which order they go in. Something like that is fine. Now I've marked that centre point, so I'm going to pop that on the centre of my centre one. But this is going to wrap round. You want this binding pressed so that it's folded in half, and this more or less is. And I'm going to just pin that into the middle. So what I'm going to do is start from the middle and work out. Rather than trying to get everything exact before I start, this is how I actually I might use some of these clips. I find these are probably a little bit easier for this sort of project. So I'm going to start, I can start sewing at that at the, that end of the flag, but this is my center one, so I've got a lot of string out that way, and I'm going to sew it so that I'm sewing the back and the front and including the little flag each time. And as I get to it, I'm going to insert the next one. So I've got about half an inch or so between each one. So we'll just get that started so you can see what I'm doing. This is such a fun little project. It grows quite quickly and it's kind of exciting. So I'm just going to start just there. So just on the binding strip. When I get to the end of that one, I'm going to pick up my next little one and I'm just going to insert it in there so that it sits approximately half an inch apart and just keep going. And then the next one. Side. 
So this should be stitching the back and the front of the binding all in one go. And then when I pop my last one in for that side, I just keep going till I get to the end because I can use this as a ribbon to tie or hang or whatever it is that I'm going to do. And if I don't need it later, well, I can just cut it off. that side and then to do the other part much the same thing but we've kind of got to work upside down just going to snip off my threads because we're going to go the other way it's, it's kind of harder to sew it that way but I find that if I just turn it upside down I can work just the same way coming out the other way back to the machine we might as well get this finished and show you it all completed. So starting in the same place as I'd started before and coming along and inserting flags as I go. This works quite well as a, as a form of binding. It's all kind of easy. So if you're making a much longer bunting, obviously you'd want some more strips to put across the top here. You could just join them together to make a much longer So I think that's a, a really neat way of using up some leftovers. It's fun, it's cheerful, you could colour coordinate for a particular project or the environment. Um, there's so much you could do with little things like that. And as I said, there's a pattern on my website on gourmetquilter.com. And uh, thank you and enjoy all those little house buntings. <laughs>